Okay, parents, I just want to touch base with everyone. We are starting essay six. Um, and so last week we talked about creating our ANI charts, which I've created one for us. And then this week we're talking, we're moving into our arrangement and we're adding a new portion to our arrangement. So your kids came home with this today, so you will see this. We are adding refutation. So I'm gonna encourage you to grab your teacher's edition and open it up to page 177 and it's gonna tell you all about refutation. Um, please use this. There is so much great information in here to help guide you through the process. If you are struggling, look at this because it gives you lots of examples that you can help your kids walk through it. But I'm gonna walk through real quick with um, the essay the, or the ANI and really walk through exactly how we take it from the ANI into the outline. All right, so first let's start with my ANI. So this week their responsibility is to go through their ANI and to sort the ANI. So I have done that. Um, I our issue is should Asa have accepted punishment for stealing the pies? The weather statement, whether Asia have. Now, I just decided on my should have. So, don't decide which side you're on until you have sorted your chart because it's going to tell you how much support you have for each one of your proofs. So, I went through and I sorted and then I came up with at the bottom, I have my little key. Um, you know, the Asia was kind. These are all the things about Asia being kind. You know, he was brave. They all kind of fall together. It's his character, really. Um, the thief asked him to take pity. They don't have to tell the secret, you know, it's not a big deal. So this is what I'm gonna end up using to write my main proofs. But for refutation, um, once you come up with your main proofs and you've gone through that process and you have your three sub proofs for each of your main proofs, you're moving to the next part. So really what happens when we get to essay six is we are actually changing our paper a little bit in that it is no longer a persuasive paper. It's now a persuasive argument because we're adding in the other side of the argument. An argument's going to take two people with two different perspectives. So we're now going to go back and we're going to deal with what those other perspectives might be. So in order to do that, that is why we have said every column needs to be filled in because if I have chosen an affirmative for this next part, our refutation, I need to deal with my negative column. So once again, I've gone through and I've sorted. And um, now that I am ready to think through how I'm actually going to write my refutation. Now, in your student's book on page 66 and 67, it flips to the other side, they have this guide to refutation. So when you get to this part, have them go through this worksheet, make a copy of it, and have them really walk through this because it's going to help them um, sort through their ideas and understand exactly what it is they need to do. Now, I made a copy, and so I'm going to move my ANI chart out of the way, and I'm going to cover up my, my own paper. So the first thing it tells us to do is it says write your thesis statement. So I have chosen the affirmative that um, Asa should have accepted punishment for stealing the pies. Then it tells me, write your counter thesis. Well, my counter thesis is the opposite. If my thesis is Asa should have, my counter thesis, Asa should not have accepted punishment. And I didn't write it all out because I know it's what it is. I just want to make sure I have the should and should not have. Then I'm going to choose one proof that supports the counter thesis. Now, I did that by going back and looking which of all of these arguments do I think I have the most support for. And I chose this could leave a dangerous thief at large which I are all of my circles. So if you go back, you know, I've got a bunch of circles of different supports for this. I'm going to choose three of them. So this could leave a dangerous thief at large. My three sub proofs from that are, well, I mean, you've got someone who's a lawbreaker. Um, they, it could happen again and it leaves the real thief unpunished. Now, right now I'm just jotting down my ideas. I'm not writing my paper. I'm just making sure that I know where my ideas are going to take me. So then we go explain why the proof is not persuasive. So this is when my first chance to be able to say, all right, well, wait a minute. This could leave a dangerous thief at large. Why is that not a good argument? Because if I'm saying, no, that's not a good argument, I need to understand why. So this is what I write. Well, if someone is starving, freezing, and needy, is he really a dangerous lawbreaker? Our call to help others is more important than the unpunished theft of a pie. So 
this is not a good argument because of this. Now, then I'm going to go down and I'm going to find a second proof. So I go back to my end chart again and I'm like, well, what do I have the most um, evidence for? And I thought I had a lot of evidence for it is wrong to deceive. So my second proof is it's wrong to deceive. So other people think it's wrong to deceive, which is why they disagree with me. And then I'm going to come up with my three sub proofs. So once again, I went back over here and I looked to see, all right, it's wrong to deceive. That's my triangle. Let me go up here and read some of my triangles and figure out what are the most important things. This is what I came up with. It's lying. The Bible says not to deceive and it's setting a bad example. All right. Now then the next part, which is on the back side, so I just wrote it at the bottom, explain why this is not persuasive. Well, this is what I said. Basically, this is not a persuasive argument because Asa never set out to deceive the town. He simply didn't volunteer information because he felt a stronger calling to protect the downtrodden. So there you go. This is refutation. Now, what will happen is when you're writing your paper, after you come up with your proofs, your three reasons why, and each proof having its three subproofs, then you're going to have another section. And in your next section, you are basically going to say something like, well, let me think, something like, um, well, some people say Asa should not have accepted punishment for stealing pies because it could leave a dangerous thief at large. This means a lawbreaker is left running around the town and it could happen again. The real thief goes unpunished and the town could be in danger. And then you would tell them, this, however, is not a good valid argument because if someone is starving, freezing and eating, is he really a dangerous lawbreaker? So do you see the flow of it? Now, I'm gonna tell you this. One of your greatest resources right now is going to be your SA6 example that's in your guide because it, remember the bold are the new elements we're adding. So next week we're going to be talking about um, adding in similes. So we'll get to that one, but you've got these bolded paragraphs right here and this really breaks down what we have said. So it goes through and it says, well, some people say, and it gives you the reasons of why they disagree with your argument. And then um, it says at the end of it, it says, um, hey, this is why it's not true. Like they're saying, well, some people say they argue that the white witch took care of Edmund and then they give their three proofs. And then, however, feeding Edmund Turkish delight in speaking kindly to him was just a means to reaching her evil goal. So this right here, this one sentence is the equivalent of this. It just has to be one sentence. So let's look at the next part. In addition, so here's the second one. That's where it goes down to the second proof. So they go to their second proof. People argue because people are arguing against you. And then they argue that the Edmund should have followed the White Witch because he was alone and scared. Well, wait a minute. Then they explain, no, 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 no. Is that really what it is? And then they end with the sentence. And they say, um, you know, he, he had his trustworthy sister with him. And he had already testified the White Witch was evil. We know that Edmund followed the White Witch out of pride and selfish ambition. And here we go. Here's our summary. Neither of these arguments that the White Witch took care of Edmund and that Edmund was alone and scared would give Edmund any sufficient reason to follow the White Witch. So they summarized it with one final statement of, hey, these reasons that it could leave a dangerous thief at large and it's wrong to deceive, neither of them offer enough proof to show that Asa should not have accepted punishment for stealing the pies. It's going to take a little bit. We do this essay, this form, three times. This first time is a lot of practice. It's going to need a lot of help and a lot of massaging through it. So if your child comes to you and you're like, oh my gracious, I'm not sure if this is right or not, it's okay. So just remember, you've got your counter thesis, which you're telling the opposite of what your thesis is. You've got your um, counter proof, 
So what's your other proof that you've gotten from your end column? You've got your summary of support. Those are the three subproofs. And then you've got your inadequacy of your reason. And then why is this proof not persuasive? And then you do it again. You've got your counterproof too. So you're doing your summary of your support. So you do your counterproof, your summary of your support, and then your inadequacy of your reason, your inadequacy of your reason. And then the last thing is the summary of your refutation. And basically what you're saying is, hey, neither this nor this are a reason why this should not have happened. So you're really just summarizing the final argument. It can just be a sentence, really. Um, so one last thing, and this is really just about formatting. So we're at a point, if your child, you feel like they've got a really great handle, at this point in time, your paragraphs can become one paragraph, two paragraphs, three paragraphs, four paragraphs. Now, I will say, the example in the book, do not follow that format. The example in the book still sets it apart. So my suggestion is, you know what your child is going to feel comfortable for. If you're afraid, hey, if I put all of my proofs and subproofs in one paragraph, I'm afraid they're going to make, not have it all. Like if I have it separated like this, it helps me to make sure they have the first reason, the second reason, the third reason. Then I say keep it that way. Totally go with what your child is prepared for. If your child is like, no, no, I'm ready to put it all together, then let them put it all together. Um, there is no hard and fast rule on this, so it's totally up to you as to what you are most comfortable for. So what I will say, make sure your kids use your outline because they will help them make sure that they have every component needed. Make sure they use their refutation worksheet because it will help them come up with their ideas. Once they're on here, it'll be relatively easy to just transfer it into a paper next week. All right, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.